As the prophet of esports, I rely on trustworthy and meaningful data every day. Data from a research partner, YouGov, offers the most complete view of esports fans and gamers in the world, providing context to who they are, what they think, the brands they buy, and things they do. YouGov's connected insights and research services inform strategy at every level. If you're a team, a brand, agency, or rights holder, you should be talking with YouGov. Their partners measure and maximize ROI and are telling compelling stories with data. Visit yougov.com slash gaming dash esports to learn more. I want to start with something a bit deeper, okay? And this is Embracer Group to acquire Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, Square Enix Montreal, and more for $300 million. So Embracer Group, uh, making an acquisition of all these studios. They're going to own over 50 new IPs. That's going to include Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, and Thief, just to name a few. They're paying $300 million for, the, for this IP and these rights. Um, and it will remove all Western Division studios under Square Enix's umbrella. So Square Enix will have nothing in the West, nothing in North America, nothing in Europe anymore. Uh, all of them will be owned by Embracer. I will just add two other stories to this that we're all talking about this acquisition, but from different angles. This one talked about how Square Enix is selling their Tomb Raider IP to invest more in blockchain games. So this is from the Square Enix side, the, the, from the seller side, they wanted to get out of essentially traditional gaming and strike a deal with Embracer to offload uh, titles like Tomb Raider and Deus Ex and all these things uh, so that they could make blockchain based games. And then the third story, which adds another little angle here, is Square Enix supposedly lost $200 million on Marvel games, which seems shocking. But Marvel Avengers, between Marvel Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy, those two games, they lost $200 million. So um, <laughs> maybe this is why they want to sell off the studios. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. What you guys think, Embracer Group, $11 billion company, acquiring all this IP, all these game studios, good, bad, interesting. What's the takeaway here? Jeff, start with you. I have a lot of thoughts. One, yeah. I didn't realize Embracer was big. Uh, $11 billion is quite large. And that's like take two is 15 or $18 billion, So that's pretty surprising to me. Um, You're like a CD Project Red, right? That's sort of equivalent. I think CD Projekt like two, two. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, eleven okay. off there. The um, it, this is the first gaming acquisition I feel like in the last two years where, when you look at the purchase price, you're like, wait, that's it? Like I, I you know, I feel like with Bungie, we were all like, oh, that's a lot, you know, just for Bungie. Even with Activision, it was like they they paid like a very hefty. Microsoft paid a very hefty premium. Um, whereas this one, you sort of, I feel like you scratch your head. You're like three hundred million really doesn't seem like that much for the Tomb Raider IP for three studios that are pumping out AAA content in the in the scope of what we've seen in the market. Like, obviously, we don't have all the financials. Um, the article you pulled up makes it seem like the financials aren't great. Like if they're losing 200 million, clearly that hurts the valuation. But just in terms of development capacity and stuff, um, 300 million seems like a, a very cheap price to be paying for some pretty good talent, some pretty good IP, and a lot of development. That's my initial thought. I mean, is maybe the IP not as good as we think it is, though? Like, to lose money on a Marvel game and an Avengers game, doesn't anyone think that that's actually hard to do, potentially? They didn't just lose money, too. They lost a lot of money, you know, <laughs> yeah. hundreds of millions. I think it just goes to show how hard it is to make a fun game, right? We always come back to that, whether we're talking about later earned gaming or indie game studios or what the big, you know, the, the larger studios need to do. That's make fun games. And, you know, my first thought was like, wow, Sony's got to feel like suckers because they overpaid for Bungie. And you guys know I felt that way for a while. But then when you talk about, well, even though they had access to this IP, they didn't do anything with it because it's a lot more than just having the IP. Right, it's it's executing, which it doesn't seem like they've been able to do. Um, interesting too that the IP that we're talking about, especially Tomb Raider and Avengers, are crossover IP, right? Where it's not just limited to 
uh, gaming alone. It, there's comics, there's movies, there's TV series and spinoffs there. And I understand this is probably just the video game portion of that. Um, but it's, it's hard to make a game. So clearly they're having struggles making big games and, uh, and wanted to offload uh, something that had been losing them money, I think. It's kind of what it sounds like. I mean, it's is it, like IP does have a shelf life, though, right? Like there are exceptions. There's Star Wars, by the way. Happy May the 4th, everyone. Where's uh, where, where's everyone's lightsaber? I don't know what, what you guys came lightsaberless. Um, but <laughs> but got mine right here. But like other than the, the you know, some of these huge tentpole IP, you know, like Star Wars and things like that that have stood the test of time. Tomb Raider, I would argue, is definitely not what it was, you know, 10 years ago. Like, uh, it's, it's not a game that people are clamoring to play when it comes out. And even Marvel, you could argue, has just bombarded the market so much that, you know, another game or another whatever just doesn't hit that hard. Um, I mean, Lindsay, do you think IP has a shelf life in this context? And maybe this is why the low price or the, the this relatively is, low this price? This is extremely random, but I actually just read a statistic of who has been, and this was, I think, two or three days ago. I was reading about who has been on the cover of most gaming-related magazines and publications in the past 10 years. And Lara Croft from Tomb Raider was far and away the top. Um, which Maybe for the, other reasons. But <laughs> yeah, well, of course. But it, um, the games have been more successful than I thought they would be um, i just thought that was an interesting little factoid um yeah like you said there's several reasons why she would be but it's just interesting um what i found most fascinating about reading this was the specific distinction that where enix wanted to get out of the business of making games in the west um and i think that that's something that we should definitely talk about because we're we tend to be and rightly so very critical of the game development environment in in asia and particularly in china even in India, there's been some starts and stops, and we all see what happened on PUBG. Um, but I and I know that they're they're focusing to more blockchain based gaming on the same day that their NFT market collapsed. So not maybe the best move right now. Um, but I find it very fascinating that they're looking to get out of this market. I can't tell if there's some sort of Fatigue, you can get tiring to make same games from used IP over and over. Uh, I don't know that there's a ton of motivation from developers there to like want to work on the Avengers, especially when the movies are a smash success and the games have left a lot to be desired. Um, so maybe everyone is just sort of ready for a change, but getting out of the Western market is not something that we've heard a lot of companies making a play to do. And I, I think that there's a lot to think about when it comes to that as a reason for selling. So it's funny that you talk about the getting into like out of almost it's almost like getting out of traditional games and putting more research into into blockchain games. When I first saw like some people tweeting about that, I literally thought it was like a joke that the people were like, "Oh, they're 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 probably like transitioning to blockchain," and it turns out that like it obviously was something that they they did mention. I don't know if it's like dollar for dollar they're going to move all all the money they they got from this to to blockchain gaming. Um, but yeah, I thought that was super surprising. Um, just because, you know, we've talked about this a lot on Meta Business, like that ecosystem just isn't really there yet. Like there's maybe one or two million people in the blockchain gaming ecosystem total. Like there's almost more VCs in the blockchain gaming ecosystem than there are actual players of the game. Hmm. So it's a, a bit premature. Um, so I am surprised, Lindsay. I think all your points about IP are correct, right? And and Chris brings up some good points in the chat around, you know, using licensed IP, uh, particularly the ones that haven't had a success in video games, can be tricky. It, it's shocking to me that an Avengers game wouldn't do well because I'm a huge Avengers fan. And, like, it, you know, we've seen other superhero games do really well. Arkham Knight with Batman, Spider-Man has obviously been, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the best games out there. So it's it's surprising. It's a, it's maybe it's a bit of execution versus just opportunity, um, but still, you're selling development studios that have a ton of talented people at a time when that is a an incredibly valuable resource. So if if the Marvel IP wasn't working, just cancel that deal and create a different IP. Uh, it's it's I don't know, very surprising. 
Yeah, maybe they thought this they're they're selling at the peak also, right? Maybe they thought this is the top and people are going to pay big dollars right now. Um, SEO says hello. SEO welcome. Chris says, I wonder if the Canadian backed incentives for tech is going to disappear in the near future was a good reason to do biz up north. I mean, Chris, they haven't they've been around for decades now. Um, uh, those tax credits, and I seriously doubt uh, I haven't heard anything to uh, think they're going to go away, but. Um, I'd be, I'd be pretty surprised if they did go away. Um, this is a big part of the, the economy, especially in Quebec, uh, where most of these studios are located, uh, to attract creative development. Um, Robert says, hello, hello, Robert. Chris says, Marvel versus Capcom didn't make much money either. And they have a huge fan base. Those licensing costs will kill you if you're not Lego. I mean, yeah, it's one of these things where. <laughs> Even with good IP, you can still make a bad game. I mean, that's just the reality. And almost all these games are, are not really good games. I, I, have any of you guys played like the Avengers game? Really pretty bad. Pretty awful. Very uh, limited to what you can do there, right? I played it for a little bit. Haven't had a good Tomb Raider game that I can recall either. My thought is if I want to go to that action adventure kind of puzzle genre, I think Uncharted instantly, right? So Tomb Raider used to have, I thought, that top spot, but fell off in the last five years, absent Lindsay's uh, reference to... Even then, it's sort of like, it's a genre It's a genre that's not hot anymore. They haven't made a movie in at least, what, 10 years? And and the reality is, like, the the appeal of Lara Croft, like, I guarantee you, if we, if we pulled 12-year-olds today, they probably don't even know who the character is. It's just a little bit of the, it's a, it's an IP that did not, um, did not transfer well, has not aged well in my mind. Um, Nessa says, hello, hello, Nessa. Welcome. Um, Chris says, will be interesting to see how Wolverine does with naughty dog producing it. Yeah. I mean, Chris, and I'm curious what all of you guys think in chat, but I think we have to disconnect IP from the studio and from the resulting game, right? These are all three independent variables and the resulting game is not necessarily a product of any of them, right? Like meaning a great studio with great IP isn't guaranteed to produce a great game. There's not, there's no direct causality in my mind. There is probably correlation at least. A great studio has a better chance of a great job. True, 